Another clean sheet, may I add the fourth one in a row, Harry Kane scored a whiz bombers back to his normal self and the race for European football is still on. We move! <laughs> And welcome to another episode of Holly Hotspurs and today I'll be talking about that 3-0 win against Leicester City. If you're new to the channel, please remember to hit a like on this video, comment you thought the game below and hit that subscribe button. The lineup comes out and I'm really delighted to see this consistency in playing the same people week in, week out. Although this time there was a little bit of difference in who was playing where. Rather than going for this 4-4-2 formation, we saw a slight different dynamic. So Larissa in goal, Serge Aurier in that right back position and credit to him again for coming out and wanting to play this game even after the devastation of losing his brother, he's still ready to play and wanting to play. We obviously see Toby and I'd like to point out as Toby's 200th club appearance today which was even better. Then we had Sanchez and Davies in left back position along with Sissoko and Harry Winks in the middle again. Like I said last game, I really like this dynamic with Lucas on the wing Sonny on the wing and Kane up top with Le Celso just sitting in that camp position. To see Le Celso in that camp position as well, like I touched on last game, I think it was nice to see that he was the reason why we scored that first goal. He was high at the pitch and getting into those nice little spaces. So maybe that's why Jose Mourinho has started him playing further up the pitch rather than being in that midfield bank of three with Sissoko and Winks. Now normally when a Tottenham game starts, we all know it starts off pretty slow. But under Jose, we've seen something of the complete opposite. Six minutes in, this business happened. To be fair, it caught me off guard because I'm about to hit my dindins and this goes bang in the goal. I would just like to point out Harry Kane's assist in this goal. He brings the ball down in the middle of the park, touches it with the outside of his boot, seeing the run of Hyunmin Son. Son runs towards goal from the outside of the corner. He runs in, does a few step overs, smashes the ball and unlucky for Leicester, it does come off Justin and it goes and puts Michael off a little bit and it goes in the back of the net. I mean, we got very fortunate there, but I'd just like to put, you can't dismiss this lovely ball from Kane. It was exquisite. And to be fair, before touching on anything, I think Harry Kane is finally back to his full potential, which we've all wanted to see for a very long time. Obviously, because of that massive deflection, it was given as an own goal, but Sonny and Kane's link up in that goal was brilliant. However, in true Tottenham fashion, since that goal went in for us, we started to slip off the mark a little bit. Leicester players were getting into dangerous areas, but luckily for us, we were managing to get rid of it just about in the nick of time. I think the first thing when I started getting a bit worried was in the 90th minute when the ball comes in for the corner and Wes Morgan is pretty much unmarked. At this point, Sissoko isn't really looking at the flight of the ball. He's rather just trying to manhug Wes Morgan. And because of that, it allows West Morgan to have a free header. Now he heads this towards the near post where awaiting Vardy is. Um, Vardy tries to be clever with it and he'll flick it into the back of the net. But luckily for us, there's two players and a Hugo Lloris in the way. So once again, a bit of lack of defending abilities in that corner, but we managed to get away with it once again and it's well defended. It goes out for another corner. That corner doesn't really come to much. This was evident again at the 24th minute when Eros Perez literally had all day to get the ball on his chest, down to his foot, swings at it. Hugo Lloris makes a big save. But again, just lack of communication in the marking. I mean, this ball comes in because Lucas and Serge Aurier aren't really talking to each other, which allows the ball to come in with a lot of time and effort as well for him to pick out Errors Perez. But luckily for us, we managed to put bodies on the line and get rid of it. Now, I know we joke about it quite a lot, and this, this running thing of the fact that Harry Winks doesn't really play the ball forward. I mean, I was done in today because someone pulled up stats and said, oh, look how many balls he passes forward. But when he plays the ball forward, it's never really with any intent. It's because he's like two yards in front of him and he just passes the ball forward. But today, today was something else. I generally thought it was Christmas. On the 29th minute, Harry Winks 
from deep, pings I literally thought Toby was making this pass, but Harry Winks is the man that pings it up to Sonny. Sonny's through on goal, he has a shot and forces Michael to make a very good save. Where is well credit to us, although our defending at times was a bit bum twitchy, we were actually putting bodies on the line trying to get in front of the goal, which for us did actually really help. And then, the 36th minute, this happened, we were rewarded once again. Gio drives with the ball from deep in the middle of the park, picks out a lovely ball to Lucas, and at this point, I'm thinking to myself, Lucas is going to run into trouble here. But no, he slows the ball down slightly, and I'm thinking, mate, Leicester players are getting back in position. But by doing this, it allows Harry Kane to make a run. He slips it into Harry Kane. Harry Kane sees the whites and the eyes of Smichael and pops it back post in the bottom of the net. It is 2-0 Tottenham. Lucas Moura really impressed me today. At times, I thought him and Serge weren't really communicating, which was allowing their attacker on that side to get balls into the box. But apart from that, Lucas Moura, instead of running aimlessly, actually picks out a decent ball to Harry Kane. It's nice to see these links-ups again. I touched on it against the Newcastle game. These link-ups and these fluid bits of play are finally coming together. It's taken a long while to get here, but it's nice to see that it's finally working. Four minutes later, four minutes later, this bloody happens as well. Harry bloody Kane scores a curly whirly whiz bomber. Okay, I think the defender allows him onto his stronger foot, but there's no discredit in this goal. This goal just goes into the back post. I think he even takes a nick off the post and goes rolls against the side netting. It was sublime. And I'd like to point out, Harry Kane is not a tapping merchant, everyone. His passes all over the park today were also, I mean, he's just an all-rounded, brilliant player. And I don't care. I mean, I'd like to point out the fact that Paul Merson thought that under Jose, he wasn't going to be able to score a goal against him because of his parking the bus tactics. Well, Paul Merson, mate, you're wrong. Because in 18 games, Harry Kane has scored 13. So, mate, go sit yourself in a corner and think about your actions, son. Because he's literally just wiped your comment under the carpet. We shall say no more. I'd also like to point out, every time we attack, I get excited. I don't think that it's a one-man team anymore. I thought at the start of the restart, there was players that just decided to do their own thing, but now we're actually gelling together. It's taken a bloody long time, but we're finally reaping those rewards. Been a brilliant first half. We got the job done early on. I was intrigued to see what would happen in the second half. In terms of the second half, there wasn't really a lot to talk about. I mean, we didn't really make as many chances as the first half. We just kind of shut up shop. And to be fair, lots of people say this is boring, but if you go 3-0 in front and you can actually manage to seal the game off why not do it i think under potch as much as i love potch i don't think we would have won that game today especially we stepped off the gas the way we did i think jose's mentality is go out there get some goals in front and then we'll shape up and i think that kind of works and to be fair if, if we manage to score goals in the first half and it's exciting and then we manage to go in and close the game off i'm all for it there's still needless tackles all over the park. I think Sissoko done a few, but Sissoko's shift today was excellent. At times, I feel like he does run into empty space, doesn't really know what to do with it, but he manages to get the ball back when we much need to. And I'd also like to point out, I think, this idea of hopefully getting this Hoiberg. I know people say, oh, but he plays for Saints, or he's probably not the best player we could probably bring in. But I think that could also put some stability into that CDM role because we all know Harry Winks and Sissoko maybe aren't predominantly those type of players and I think they've done a really good shift but just having Hoiberg in there maybe to mix it up could also free up this idea of Tanga and Ndombele. I mean we'd all like to see this combo Lo Celso and Ndombele and maybe that's why Jose hasn't tried it yet because we don't have an out and out CDM. I don't know, I'm just throwing things out there. In terms of this game, we also saw Soddy come off, Getson come on for a little bit. We also saw Skippy come on, Lamela come on. I don't even think Lamela got a yellow card, did he? I don't think he did. I was ready to play Lamela bingo when he came on, but I think he kept his head for a little bit. There was one challenge he made that he did look like he need kebab someone, but I think he got away with it. We also saw a little bit of Stevie B. Like I said, I think it was too late in the game really to see anything happen. I think Jose's plan was, right, let's shut up shop now, let's get these three points. And I'd also like to point out, the one time we really need to get three points, we go and do it. So the race for European football is still on, which is a madness. I was adamant that European football was gone.
but it's slowly coming back, which is really nice. And to think that Jose has managed to get, what is it now, 44 points since he's taken over, I think is a real credit to him. Especially, it's the same team pretty much, they took over from Poch, so I think that makes me excited for next year. If he can bring in a new CDM, potentially bring in a right back or a left back, I think we're living lavish. So now we move to Sunday, the last game of the season against Palace. I'm looking forward to it. I'm quite sad that we also didn't see Jan Vertonghen, which is potentially his last home game ever in a Spurs shirt. We'd lunch, we didn't get to see him play, but hopefully maybe against Palace he gets a little cameo. But until Sunday, Hope we all stay well. Hope we all stay safe. I'll see you for another video on Sunday. But yet again, another three points. Let's go. Come on, you Spurs. See you next time.